Hi everyone, my name is Carlina West and I work with Public Health and Prevention as a Prevention Specialist. And my name is Elizabeth Darcy. I also work with Public Health and Prevention as a Prevention Specialist. And we're here to share some upcoming events and activities we have going on. So what's going on in the world of WIC these days? We are very busy this summer with WIC. We've got a lot going on. But one of the reasons we're really busy is we are gearing up for a community baby shower that we're going to host at the end of August. And right now we're really raising awareness for the event and we're asking the community for some donations. What kind of donations are you looking for? So we are collecting new, clean, or gently used baby items to help a baby in the first year of life. So things like strollers, cribs, um, toys, gently used clothes, books, anything that really helps baby and family in that first year of life. We want to make sure we have something for each um, participant in the baby shower to walk away with in addition to our other prizes. Is there anything you can't accept? There are some things we can't accept. We unfortunately cannot accept car seats, uh, well-worn clothing, bottles or pacifiers, um, used uh, cloth diapers, mattresses, or baby formula or baby food. And where can people take their donations? So people are welcome to drop their donations off at the Consolidated Office Building Lobby, the county building here in Bishop at 1360 North Main Street. We've got a little box people can drop off their donations. And if they're unsure if we can accept a donation, they're welcome to call us at 760-872-1885. And what can people expect from this uh, baby shower? So people can expect a lot of fun. We've got some great activities planned, including some baby shower games. We also have a ton of great resources and some of our community partners will be there. Since this is focused on breastfeeding month, we're gonna have breastfeeding resources as well as support in the community. So people can come and ask questions about that. And we're really excited to have our First Five team and our MCAH team present as well to talk about some of their programs as well as SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome and how to prevent that. So we've got a lot of great stuff that'll be happening. And who's invited to this event? So our uh, pregnant community is invited, families who are currently pregnant as well as those who have given birth in the past year. And we definitely encourage you know older siblings, partners, spouses, other caregivers to come and really make this a big party. We're really really excited for it. Awesome. Yeah. What about First Five? What's going on with First Five this summer? So for First Five, through our Inyo County Home Visiting Program, we actually have a play group, which will be July 27th from 9 to 11.30 a.m. And it will be located in the uh, Bishop City Park, which will be right behind the skate park in the grassy area right there. That sounds fun. What will you be doing at the play group? Yeah, so it'll be a fun little picnic style event with free activities, crafts, and snacks. And we will also be sharing information about other First Five programs, such as our Family, Friends, and Neighbors program, and then learn more about our home visiting program. And if anyone's willing to sign up, we will have the opportunity to do at the uh, playgroup. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I am uh, Carlina West, and I work with Public Health and Prevention as a Prevention Specialist. And I'm Elizabeth Darcy, also with Inyo County Public Health and Prevention as a Prevention Specialist. If you have any questions on the baby shower, please feel free to give us a call at 760-872-1885. And on behalf of Public Health and Prevention, we, we are, are leaders, leaders of change and empowering healthy communities. <laughs> Hello everyone, Chief Durr with the Bishop Police Department with your July um, Bishop Police Department update. This month, um, instead of just focusing on the heat, um, I'm going to focus on what's going on personnel-wise with the Bishop Police Department. So we're working on our staffing to try to better serve you. So recently we hired and has started a lateral officer, um, Officer Daniel Burton. He's born and raised in Bishop, California, spent 10 years with the Inyo County Sheriff's Office and various duties and roles. So we're happy to have him um, with his experience come over to help serve the community of the citizens of Bishop. We also have uh, two dispatchers and backgrounds to fill 
couple of our dispatch spots and to fill some part-time dispatch spots as well for some relief and some added dispatch capabilities uh, for our community. Also working to test for officer trainee this summer. So we have a lot of applicants out there. If you're one of them, apologize for the delay for a little bit. It takes a little while to get things together, but we are gonna test this summer to establish a list so we can pull from a list when we do have future openings. And um, so we can get to back to full staff to be able to serve you guys as the public better and more capably. And that's our personnel update from the Bishop Police Department and the update and wrap for July 2024. I'm Jimmy T with Skippable News, Laughing Parrot. Sierra Way, the KSRW, and today we're honored to have Mr. Chris Andreessen with IE. He's the Chief Public Information Office Chief for Caltrans. For Caltrans District 9, District which 9. covers Mono, Inyo, and Eastern Kern County, yes. That was a great movie they made yet after y'all. Yeah, if, Welcome. if, if I, I, you know, when I first moved out here, that was the very first thought that came to my mind. It's like, oh man, I'm going to the place with the aliens. Yeah. It's prawn. Yeah. So tell us, what projects do you have right now? What are you working on? So we have a, a couple of projects ongoing. We have some upcoming ones I just want to make people aware of because uh, it's going to be a, a busy next couple of months and next couple of years, in fact. So uh, if you've ever, if you've been out on our roadways on 395, particularly uh, over the past couple of weeks, you've probably experienced or encountered some of our projects. Uh, down south in Inyo County near Olancha, we have the Olancha Cartago four lane project. Uh, this started either last year or the year before, um, and it's expanding US 395 uh, through that area to a four lane expressway. Um, it's a safety project because, you know, as you've, you've probably heard, we've had uh, some uh, crashes down there uh, on the two lane portion. And so uh, this project is helping to alleviate uh, that issue. So construction on this one is ongoing. And this this year, uh, they're dumping a lot of pavement uh, for, uh, for, for paving, 120,000 tons, I believe is the figure they gave me, of how much paving we will be doing this year. Um, and this project, uh, like I said, it's been going on since at least last year. Uh, construction on it isn't expected to wrap, is expected to wrap up uh, in the fall of 2025. So next fall, um, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I know that our, our, our construction team out there is doing a great job of getting it done. How many projects do you have in th District 9 on 395? You know? uh, going on right now in actual construction, uh, three major projects. We might have smaller maintenance projects as well, um, but the ones that are actually impacting traffic is, is we have three. Um, so there's the Atlantic Cartago, um, and then there's the Sonora Junction Shoulders Project. Uh, this is up in northern Mono County near Sonora Junction. Uh, we're expanding the uh, we're expanding the shoulder to eight feet wide. Um, we're redoing the pavement, but more importantly, we are installing two wildlife tunnels under the highway. Um, we're very excited about that, but doing that will require a full closure of US 395. Now we're working on the dates for this. It's gonna be in September. We don't have them set in stone just yet, but once we do, we have a huge uh, outreach campaign planned to alert people that this is coming up. Is there any diversion you can go around that or is it pretty much? It's uh, it, it's going up into Nevada and it's taking uh, Kramer, not Kramer Junction, that's down south, uh, Holbrook yep. Junction, I believe is what it's called. Um, to 182. So we are trying to uh, to minimize the impact of the community, but it will be a full closure of the highway. Cool. So what else do you have besides that? Um, that project, so that project's expected also to wrap up next year. Okay. Uh, one that we anticipate to wrap up this year is our Conway Ranch Shoulders Project, which is further south in Mono County near Lee Vining. Uh, this one is also expanding the embankment and uh, shoulders to eight feet. Uh, just at the at the the bottom of of Conway Summit, uh, we're also uh, expanding the um, uh, 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 chain up areas. We're uh, extending those for the northbound chain up areas and adding lighting to that one, so that if it's dark outside, you'll be able to you know people will be able to see you and you will be able to see what you're doing. So uh, those are our three major projects we have right now on 395. Uh, we also have a smaller project happening here in Bishop on 168 West Line Street. Uh, this is a bike and pedestrian improvement project. You might have seen this if you've driven by uh, the hospital. 
Um, so that project is expected to wrap up next week. I don't know when this will air, but uh, but next week, the week after July 9th, I guess. Um, and that actually connects to a project that we have starting next year, which is our Bishop Pavement project. Yeah. So um, that's what we have going on right now. Coming up, especially at the start of next year, we're going to have several major projects throughout, uh, throughout our district. Um, later this summer, there's going to be a small pavement project down near... Uh, Alantia south of the current project that is um, a, a thin blanket project. It's called the Dunmovin Thin Blanket. Um, shouldn't be any major traffic impacts from that. Uh, but starting next year, we will have in early spring, late winter, mid spring, uh, we have several projects, including uh, Meadow Farms ADA, which is re, uh, I have my doubt here, <laughs> it's increasing accessibility on US 395 between uh, CV, uh, CV Lane and Barlow Lane here in Bishop. It's expanding the sidewalks to be multi-use path on both sides of the highway. It's, an, it's, it's actually building sidewalks as well so that uh, pedestrians and cyclists can safely walk and, and pedal on this mixed-use path. We're adding in parking uh, and uh, ex expanding the, extending the, the walking path on the bridge that's there as well. Uh, and then the pavement that's through that area will be rehabilitated as part of the Bishop Pavement Project. Uh, this, these two projects will likely be going concurrently and Bishop Pavement Project is gonna be a big one for, for the city of Bishop. It's gonna rehabilitate the pavement from Barlow Lane to uh, south of, was it J Street where the Jack in the Box is? Uh, just south of that. Um, and we're installing some uh, crosswalk signals, we're uh, installing new crosswalks and we're also putting in bike lanes on 168 uh, from Main Street all the way to the hospital where we currently have bike lanes. So we are gonna, you know, we're, we're, we're increasing access for cyclists uh, uh, on 168. We're very excited about that. And th these are all be done by 2025? So those are all starting. Plan. Oh, starting. Starting construction okay. in early 2025, yes. What's the estimated time of completion? Um, different projects have different amount of time. So for the Bishop Pavement Project, uh, there's about 210 working days. Uh, and there are different factors that can impact that um, uh, weather incidents, uh, crashes, uh, availability of materials, uh, anything that can uh, impact our current projects, you know, it can have the same effect on our, on our upcoming ones. Um, the Meadow Farms ADA has 180 working days, so that will be done uh, ideally before uh, Bishop Pavement is done. Uh, and then further south in Inyo County, we have Manzanar Pavement also uh, scheduled for early next year. Uh, and this is repaving about 11 miles of US 395 uh, from Manzanar all the way up to uh, just south of Fort Independence. Uh, and this includes through the town of, um, of Independence and there will be uh, uh, ADA adjustments, Americans with Disability Act uh, adjustments and improvements made on that project. Uh, and then we have Fish Springs, which is another repaving project like uh, like uh, uh, Manzanar, it's not a full rehabilitation, but it it will uh, it, it will improve the roadway and it will improve drivability. This one goes from um, the north end of Big Pine, right where it meets 167, all the way down to Poverty Hills. Uh, we're going to be in, uh, including some ADA improvements on the sidewalk and ramps, but this one uh, and both of those projects have a, uh, a 100 working days assigned to them each. So you know some of these projects will end sooner than others. Uh, um, Bishop may go into 2026. We're not sure quite yet. It all depends on what happens during construction. So, but we're we're very enthusiastic. These projects, uh, especially Bishop Pavement, has been in the works for a while, and so we're finally finally glad to see that they're close to coming to fruition. In fact, all of these projects we should be sending out to advertise uh, within the next two months, so that we can actually get bids on them and we can you know really finalize the process that we need to do hello this is jimmy t with sierra wave lpp and everybody else and today we're honored to have lindsay stein she's brought who have you brought i have brought in rocky from the animal shelter how old is rocky rocky is approximately 16 weeks and oh. he is from north barlow he's an owner surrender he is just the most cute little puppy and he is looking for his forever home with someone and what kind of dog is Rocky? So he is a mix. Um, he is uh, long, he's got longer fur, but he is a little mix and he is just cute. He's beautiful. 
Now, <clears throat> will Rocky be an insert, inside dog or an outside dog? Oh. Um, he can be trained as both. He's got such a really good learning personality, and he's done well indoors and very playful, so can go outdoors. He's, he's been a love bug since he walked in here, just all over. Oh, yeah. Here, Kelvin. So uh, how does someone adopt Rocky? So you can call the animal shelter, uh, 760-938-2715. And you can also go down to the animal shelter and, you know, take a look at him. You can take him on a little walk, um, get to know him. He is a really good on the leash, no issues. And he's been fixed? Um, I believe uh, once the adoption process starts, he will be fixed. All of the animals that leave the animal shelter, um, they become, you know, spay or neutered. It's part of the package. And for this entire month of July, uh, all adoption fees are free. So Eastern Sierra Dog Rescue is paying for all the dogs. Um, and then the county and the sheriff's office are actually taking care of all of the cat spay and neuter fees. That is outstanding. <clears throat> it's a... Every time you can save money is good. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. Well, we really want to get uh, the shelter some help. They um, are at maximum capacity right now, um, and that includes about 30 dogs. Um, and then there are 23 cats in-house, and we have about 20 kittens that are out in foster homes right now. So we are, we are busting at the seams with the animals. And what hours of operation do you run? Um, so our hours are, um, I know we're closed on Monday, and then we are 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, the rest of the days of the week. Outstanding. Including Saturday. And it's always good to call ahead, right? Yeah, definitely give a call ahead um, just to see, you know, um, who's in and what's going on. And some of these individual animals get adopted, of course. That's the goal. So you just want to double check if you have someone in mind. And um, I do want to add, we have a, a rabbit. His name is Bart. Whoa. Yeah, we are pretty unique. <laughs> Was he in the Monty Python movie? Is he a killer rabbit? Uh, you know, I don't know. Don't know yet. Never know. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. So you talked about fostering. How does someone do that? Um, so you would fill out an application, a foster application, and uh, that would be submitted for review. And then once reviewed and approved, you would have to have your... Um, you know, the property, you looked over, make sure it's uh, uh, suitable for if you're taking in a dog. Um, and then you would just start fostering. So you would receive the animal and take care of the animal and promote that animal to try to get that animal home. And if you determine that that animal is a good fit for your house, you would keep that animal. Now, <clears throat> are you going to send to Rocky the Doggy Academy? I don't know. He's so darn cute. We should. He is. Cool. This is Jimmy T with the amazing Lindy sign and the equally, if not more so amazing, Rocky. He's eight weeks old. Call now. He needs a forever home. And can I take him? Okay. <laughs> this is Jimmy T with Skippable News, LPP, Sierra Wave, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Jason Brown and I am with Jennifer Whitney at what used to be known to most people as the Ben Franklin Building here in downtown Bishop, but it's no longer the Ben Franklin Building. Nope. And Jennifer, you guys with River Holdings Bishop are getting, well, I shouldn't say getting ready to remodel. You're already in the process of that. Yeah. So you're gonna take us on a tour and show us this building, what it was and what it's gonna become, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but where we're standing, could you tell us about above us? Yeah. So one of, the, one of my favorite parts about the demolition process, which we did last year when we first acquired the building, is that we uncovered this really amazing river landscape mural. Um, and it's on laugh, on plaster, likely from the 1940s. It's not really a recognizable local landscape. It does have a mountain in the background that kind of looks like Mount Shasta. Really? Um, apparently, it was common in the 40s with uh, landscape images to do composites. Um, many people have said that it looks like it could be Northern Europe, and we do have <laughs> um, quite a Basque history here. Okay. So it potentially could be um, some family member that. type that. Right. Um, but it, it's a really beautiful river landscape. There is a building in it. Um, this building was originally built by the Archelarius family to be the central city market. It seems like the mural came later. The building was built sometime between 1900 and 1910. Okay. Um, but the, the preservationists said the mural is likely from around the 40s. Oh, so it's a little bit later it's then. It's a little later.
later, you can see in this image we do have of the Archelaria City Market, there are were some other landscape murals. Okay. Um, and so it's unknown whether whether or not it's related. I've had several local landscape painting experts down here to look at mm. it. There's no signature and no one recognizes it as a local artist. Interesting. So how do you preserve something like this during construction? I see it wrapped, foam, strapped. So um, our team is out of Los Angeles. They trained in Europe to restore these, this particular type of mural that's painted on okay. plaster. Um, it's a very laborious process. Yeah. And because when we were doing the demolition, if you remember correctly, this was all beige metal shelving. Right, um, exactly. So the shelving was was over it, and there were nails through the plaster. Oh my! Um, and the guys called me during the demo and said, "You have to come down here right now. You won't believe what we found." <laughs> and the edge of it was already gone. I, I have no idea if that was before or in wow. their process. But um, so I started calling. I called um, the University of California, Los Angeles, and connected with these with these wonderful um, preservationists that restored a lot of the social change murals around Los Angeles. Okay. Um, they're such a great team. They love Bishop, and so they got to come up here for a week and um, clean the mural and coat it with a special coating that will keep it from getting further damage. Okay. And then um, also they devised with our handlers this pressurized system um, to keep it from any further damage during the construction vibration, which wow. there will be a significant amount of. There probably will be to restore this building back to what you want it to be, but that's just absolutely amazing. I mean, most people would, would not even think twice of preserving something like that. And it's so cool to see that history saved for other generations to see. Now these boards behind us here, Obviously, these came from somewhere else at one time, yeah, too. Yeah, these boards, and there's a lot of really amazing old-growth wood in here. They're likely um, dug fir. Yeah. And um, they probably came from somewhere else around town, and they were reusing them because you can see there are these cool, like, old posters. <laughs> yeah. Um, that were just on the boards from somewhere else. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Well, where are we going to go next? Um, well, where should we start? Do we want to look at the rest of the kind of historic elements we uncovered in this room? Yeah, maybe. Let, let's do that. Uh, we're going to go to a different spot and we'll be with you in just a second. Okay, well, we didn't go far, Jennifer. We went from one side of the building to the other. <laughs> Literally, we were just over there by the boards and the, and the mural. But we're standing, you said it was the Archularis family, right? Yeah, so, so the, the Archularis ranching family um, built originally this building as the central city market. Right. And so this wall would have had all the little goodies on it. And so we'd probably be a few more feet out and there'd be a countertop. But the floor, you can tell that the concrete was one way here, but then in front of us and Jimmy can throw in B-roll for this, but. Yeah, they scored the concrete in this really cool diamond pattern. Um, and that's that's all original and we hope to sort of recreate what you what we can't save because obviously it's it's pretty well damaged at this point. Oh, so you're actually going to have to tear some of this up. So um, because of the way um, the soil is in Bishop, mm. it's very marshy and because there's so much less water in the ground than there was um, when this building was built 120 something mm -hmm. years ago. Um, so you can see that there has been some sinking of the foundation. Yeah. It's, it's more glaring upstairs. No, I can see what you're talking about but now that when I get down here, I can see it really bowing down here and it rolls over that way. In order to make sure that this, this building is, is well built yeah. well into the future, we have to start over from the footings here. Okay. So you can see we already dug and we did a soil study. That's where right. those patches are. And, okay. Um, and when we, when we start the project, they'll be redoing the foundation. So when the Archularis built this, only half, if you remember Ben Franklin's coming in here, it was a very wide store. The other side of the wall that we were just standing on would have been another business at that time, that they were only half of the store, okay. right? And then what was, it was the Schultz Valley something in what time so period was that? That just became... In the 40s or early 50s, it was purchased by Sam Schultz. Okay. And it became um, the G&E Five and Dime. Okay. Which is a variety store. In some places, it's also called the Schultz Variety Store. All right. Um, Sam was an entrepreneur around town who had several <laughs> businesses um, and quite a legacy here. And it remained the GE Five and Dime until 1962 or shortly before that when it okay. became Ben Franklin. It was also at one time you said you uncovered it. Was, was it Pioneer Hardware? 
We've seen some photos where the Pioneer Hardware sign was on this building. So there's some ambiguity in the, like, between Archelarius and when it became, when Sam Schultz okay. bought it, whether or not Pioneer Hardware may have been in this building for a time. Okay. It seemed to have moved around Main Street a few times. Right. Tell us about the ceiling. So this is what we call a coffered ceiling. Um, it's a beautiful original detail. We're very excited to, to preserve. Um, that we get to keep. Yes. <laughs> it may have to be deconstructed because if you look closely, you can see that there is absolutely no insulation or firewall between oh, yeah. this wood ceiling and the wood floor upstairs. Mm. Um, so, so it certainly will have to be deconstructed and, but and reconstructed. rebuilt. Okay. But we hope to save as much of this beautiful original wood as That's we can. And we're, we're measuring in detail to make sure that we recreate everything as close to original as possible. You know, I love, I and mean, you were talking just briefly about how downtown is turning back to that way and it makes you wonder like when we look at this now this is so beautiful why did we cover it with those ugly little ceiling tiles yeah. at the time and I, I, I know that there was trends in life we, we at times carpeted over the beautiful hardwood floors they obviously tiled over this amazing concrete but uh, can you tell us any more about what's going on in the downtown Bishop before we do more of the tours? So there's there's a lot changing. And I think in this time frame, people are starting to understand that what makes small communities unique is their historic assets. Mm -hmm. assets. And Bishop has a lot of those. Yeah. Um, so many of these buildings on Main Street had beautiful Art Deco architecture. Mm -hmm. This building is older than most of those. But the movie theater, for instance, right. the... Um, the old gear exchange that's now an insurance building, but mm -hmm. it used to be the Golden State Cafe, and it was a beautiful Art Deco I building. remember it as a tennis shoe store, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and they've just removed the the metal siding, and they're restoring that facade. That's so amazing. It's um, so cool. Which is so wonderful. Um, I really hope the movie theater is able to move their project forward to their really fundraising. the Western Front. Hi there, I'm Pastor Tim Holman from the Pastor's Roundtable and Bishop Grace Lutheran Church and Mammoth Lakes Lutheran Church with a message for you today about forgiving thy neighbor, which sounds fairly easy. This message from Matthew 18, verses 33. Should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? When we are offended by someone, we often feel like that person owes us something to make it right. And if he or she doesn't make things right, we convince ourselves that we are somehow justified in holding a grudge. As my mother would say, how is that serving you, right? Holding that grudge, carrying that anger with you. That's not what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was about. He's about forgiveness. He's about dusting off your feet and going on to the next house if you're rejected and won. But lack of forgiveness can lead us to bitterness and poisoning of our souls. When we refuse to forgive others who have wronged us, when we're cleansing our knuckles so tight they're white, our time and energy is not spent on figuring out how to forgive them, but rather how to get even. We become truly wicked people. Thank God that Jesus didn't treat us this way. Jesus has not punished us for our sin. He's not unleashed a vengeance on us. He owes us nothing, yet gives us everything. Since we have been forgiven of every sin, thought, word, and deed, from our time of birth to our dying breath, since we have been totally forgiven of our sinful condition that's tainted our entire lives, why should we hold a grudge and not forgive our neighbors? My prayer to you, my friends, is, Lord, teach me to forgive others as you have forgiven me. Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. I'm Pastor Tim Holman from Mammoth Lakes Lutheran Church, Bishop Grace Lutheran Church. Tune in to me on the Pastor's Roundtable. There's destiny about Horizon. On June 28th, Horizon arrives in theaters. If you're strong enough, tough enough, you can make what's out there yours. Horizon, an American saga. Only in theaters June 28th. Read it R. Stop! 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 Stop!